This is Copa Airlines, Panama's major airline. They connect North America to Central and South America via their hub in Panama City. Today I'm gonna fly with them on their business class from Panama City to New York JFK. Unfortunately, I have to say that this experience was not a positive one in regards of a business class product and a lounge in terms of food options. Despite the disappointing business class and lounge food, there is one positive aspect that I cannot ignore. The cruise service was exceptional. So if you're wondering if Copa Airlines is worth flying with, keep watching to find out what this airline has to offer and if it's worth your money. After spending 10 amazing days in Panama, seeing the canals and spending most of the holiday on the island of Bocos del Toro, it was time to head back home. The airport is new and fresh and Copa has a massive check-in area here for business class passengers and Starlines Gold members. The check-in was done within minutes. Just checked in our bags, so now we're going to the gold track. Let's go. The airport was really nice. This is Terminal 2, which is uh, newly built for, uh, I don't know how long ago, but it feels kind of new and nice. And now we're going to check the Copa Club and see how the lounge is. The Copa Lounge is accessible for all Copa Airlines business class passengers and Star Alliance Gold members. But there's a big drawback to this. In addition to the Star Alliance network, almost all credit card holders that have lounge access in the program and some other alliances such as KLM and Air France have access here as well. This means that it can be really crowded at some times. As we continue exploring the lounge, I wanted to take a moment to remind you to like and subscribe to my channel if you're enjoying this video. Your support means a lot and helps keeping the channel going. So please take a moment to hit the like button and subscribe if you already haven't. Now let's go back to the lounge. The lounge here is really nice. It's uh, brand new, you can see it uh, on uh, the furniture and everything. The one thing that it's not good is that uh, there's only one buffet area and the buffet, well, it isn't a good buffet and uh, you shouldn't come hungry here, that is what I can say. Because it was not uh, a lot, there was some tuna sandwich, uh, some uh, carrots and some celery and some creams and that's it. A big ass um, drink machine though, so but uh, Kind of disappointed the food, but overall the lounge is super nice. So it's only the food that is bad here. Regardless, I needed to grab a bite before taking a shower. The Copa Lounge provides six shower suites that are available to those with flights over four and a half hours. The shower suites were spacious and refreshing, providing a great way to freshen up before a flight. However, it's worth noting that some amenities are limited or missing. I have never left a lounge before feeling hungry. However, it was time to proceed to the flight. Here we were greeted with a Boeing 737-800 that was ready for boarding. The process proceeded without any issues, with priority and business class passenger given the privilege to board first. Before boarding the plane, let's have a look at the seat map. The configurations offers three cabin classes, economy, economy extra and business class. The economy class has either 120 seats or 114 seats, depending on the configuration. The economy extra section has 24 seats, providing passengers with extra legroom as the added benefit. Meanwhile, the business class features 16 seats, arranged in a 2-2 configuration. Now let's proceed to the plane and take a closer look at these seats. While the business class seats and Copa flights may appear authentically pleasing from a distance, they are not entirely live flat. Upon closer inspection, it becomes apparent that some of the components of the seats are outdated, while others appear newer. The seats themselves have a retrofitted appearance with a pleasant leather-like texture. However, this is where the positive feature comes to an end. While attempting to raise the IFE monitor, it feels like a step back in time. But we will revisit the IFE system shortly. As previously mentioned, Copa operates two versions of their 737 aircraft. During my trip to Panama, I flew the older configuration, while on my return to the United States, I was on the newer configuration. One significant difference between the two configurations is the rope pitch, which has an 11 inch or 28 centimeters variance, which is a considerable amount. Let's begin with the seat tour. Positioned in front of you is a spacious seat accompanied by a pocket to store your belongings. The legroom is quite generous, and even if the passenger in front of you reclines their seat, it won't be an issue. On your left side, there's a compartment area for holding your personal items or glasses. Within the armless lies the IFE monitor, which can be opened by pressing a button at the far end. The screen can be pulled up in a somewhat unusual manner. 
Located next to your ties are the USB charge plug, headphone jack and buttons for controlling the seats and the footrest. On the right hand side is the table that can be pulled up and feel sturdy and have extra support by the middle console, preventing any bouncing up and down. The seats itself is quite wide and comfortable with the ability to recline far back. The headrest can be adjusted to your preference with flaps on both of the sides. Over your head is individual air nozzles for your control. Before takeoff, let me show you the other configuration offered by Copa. In this configuration, the row pitch is smaller and there is no individual IP screens provided. The middle console lacks any USB ports or power outlets and appears outdated in design. Additionally, there is no footrest, but the seat reclines the same as the newer configuration. Unfortunately, the table in my seat were unstable and wobbled on the side, indicating that wear and tear of the seat. Let's begin the pushback and takeoff before we continue the journey with the meal and the service. Our flight today departs from Panama City, heading north over 2200 miles, crossing the Caribbean Ocean, Cuba, and the Bahamas before landing in JFK Airport. The estimated flight time is 5 hours and 15 minutes. Flight entertainment in business class was extremely disappointing. The monitors were outdated and difficult to use, with limited movie and TV shows options. The system was slow and unresponsive, making it a frustrating experience overall. I was hoping for a more enjoyable flight experience, but unfortunately the entertainment fell short of my expectations. If you are so unlucky with your aircraft type, you won't even get a personal IV screen. Instead, you will be forced to watch a show that you may not even be interested in in a shared screen located overhead. This lack of individual entertainment options is a major letdown, especially in business class. Copa offers headphones for all business class passengers, but don't pack away your personal headset for this. The headphones were very poor quality and the sound quality was subpar and had no noise cancelling. The food service, on the other hand, was remarkably slow. Given that I hadn't eaten much from the lounge, I was already feeling hungry. Unfortunately, it took nearly two hours before we got served our meal. The food was mediocre. I ordered a chicken while my girlfriend had a beef, and both were neither bad nor good. However, during my previous flight I had some tasty toast, so it seems that the quality of the food may vary depending on the timing and the date of the travel. For dessert there was a cake of some kind, but it was tasteful and juicy. Following the meal, I decided to check out the lavatory, which is located in front of the aircraft. However, the lavatory was quite cramped, making it difficult for individuals taller than 5'11 or 180cm to move around without hitting their head in the ceiling. Aside from that, there was no noteworthy amenities or products available. Before landing, I will give you my honest opinion of Copa Airlines Business Class. I have to say that the business class experience was disappointing. When you pay two to three times more for the fare, I expect more. If you compare Copa to other business class product out there, they fall behind. Usually an intracontinental business class product, you get a pre-departure drink, amenities and often a fully life flat bed. There's nothing to set the tone for a premium experience here. It feels more like a US domestic first class flight. The seats were comfortable but not exceptional and the older configurations lacks personal IP screens, USB ports and power outlets. The newer configuration was better, but not still on par with other airlines in terms of features and amenities. However, one positive aspect of the flight that was exceptional was the service provided by the crew. They were attentive and accommodating, always willing to help and make the flight as comfortable as possible. The crew gave the impression that they were here for the passengers and made you feel welcome on board. In conclusion, while I wouldn't have paid for this flight again, I'm glad that I used my Euro bonus points for this trip. The price was only 50,000 points for a round trip from US to Panama. If you have come this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and considering subscribing to my channel.
By subscribing you will never miss out of my latest video and helpful tips. Thanks again for your support and we will see you in the next one. Have a safe flight.